Good afternoon, my friends. This is the Grim Flare, and I hope you are all doing very well today. We're back in the pilot's chair for some more competitive league action with everybody's favorite deck, Golgari Midrange. I'm showing you my May list here with one change. I've made an emergency alteration uh, to bring back my Graph Digger's Cage, and I have done so because not only was it potentially a little bit loose to move away from it in the first place in the current meta, but now with this Neoform Gristlebrand combo deck apparently being seen everywhere online. I haven't been playing much, so I haven't seen it yet myself, but that's what I've read. Um, yeah, I think I think we do kind of need to play with our Graft Digger's Cage in the sideboard still. Initially, it made way for Ashiok, because I really want to test Ashiok, and of course, there's some overlap in terms of where they're effective with Ashiok. Perhaps not being as good in Cage in some of the overlapping matchups, but also having broader utility across the meta, right? Um, but having said that, we do still need to play with the cage right now, based on what I've been seeing and reading lately, and I still want to test the new tech of Ashiok, so I have done the unthinkable. I've done the unthinkable, I have cut my trusty, uh, second copy of Maelstrom Pulse from the sideboard. Just for now, you know, it's definitely not something I'm happy to be, be moving away from, but, um, you know, I didn't really have too many other things I wanted to move away from either, so we're going to play with only one pulse, and I'm a big advocate of two pulses, so it feels bad, but, you know, we'll we'll see how it goes today. Hopefully we don't get punished for that, and hopefully Ashiok and Cage uh, win us some games. As we're loading into our first match, I have to thank two brand new Patreon supporters. So first up is Zhao Lieta. I hope I got your name correct, my friend. Zhao is an Inquisitor. Thank you so much for your support. And we also have to thank Paul Peterson. Now, Paul is of the veil, so an extremely generous level of support from Paul. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. So thank you both. Welcome aboard. And thank you to all Patreon supporters. We've won the die roll, and we've got a really nice curve out. We will keep. The opponent will mulligan, and do note that London Mulligan is no longer being tested on MTGO, so this was a good old-fashioned Vancouver Mulligan with a scry to the top, which will be useful to know when we decide what to do with this here, Inquisition of Kozilek. So, we're against Tron, okay. Oh boy, they have new Karn in here, so... They have Urza's Mine, Blast Zone, and Forest. They scribe to the top? I don't know what it... It's really hard to tell what it could be to the top. Maybe another one drop, maybe a land. Um, seems unlikely they'd scry a big payoff to the top, but you never know. So, new Karn, um... Activated abilities of our artifacts, sure. And it can turn an artifact into a beater, or they can go tutor up something, and I think they tutor up Mycosynth Lattice and basically lock out the mana, something like that. I'm not entirely clear, but I think we, uh, we do clearly have to take Expedition Map there. And they go mine into star. So... Our curve out is no longer that impressive because Liliana the Last Hope doesn't do all that much here. Um, just basically deciding what land to play, whether I want to expose Field of Ruin. I think I'd rather shock in here. What am I talking about? We needed to shock in to play Tarmogoyf anyway. It's my first game. I'm not warmed up yet. What can I say? <clears throat> Blast Zone is a tough one. Um, them having any kind of a of a four drop, you know, value piece that they don't need to reach six or seven mana for is also a little bit tough. Sylvan Scrying potentially <laughs> also a tough one. Uh, so they got Urza's Power Plant, and we draw a Fatal Push. So our draws have been bad. That is without question. So, the good news is there's no real need to field this turn. But if we're, if we're not fielding, we're just playing Liliana, the Last Hope, who really doesn't do much here. Um, 
what we could do is just blind mill and hope to grow the Tarmogoyf that way to increase our clock, and I think that might be our best play. And, and hopefully, of course, to buy back a threat as well, but maybe, worst case scenario, grow the Goyf, that's our hope. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't think ticking her up is any good. So, if only you were a Lily of the Veil, but we're going to mill, and hey, we grow the Goyf by one, so that's fine, and we get it rid of two bad cards, so... I guess that was a play. <laughs> um, we can, you know, also consider next turn taking her up the following turn, minusing again with the same intention, plus also growing the Goyf with yet another type when she goes to the graveyard as a Planeswalker. So, um, it's not great. It's not great because they have the Karn on 4 and they have the Blast Zone as well, plus they're just already doing other Tron things. Blast Zone, of course, can answer Tarmogoyf at some point. A card that they might otherwise struggle to answer main deck. And they find a relic off of stirrings. That's pretty bad. And we find another goif. That's pretty bad given their relic, but okay. Cashing in the Relic. Okay, so we let that resolve, and then we can grow the Goyf by one here if we're going to play our Field of Ruin. I guess we might as well. We're definitely not just going to get them, you know. We're not going to catch them without any basics to fetch, is, is what I mean. Now they're Sylvan Scrying. Well, they're drawing well, we're, we're not. They go replace that power plant. And another Relic of Progenitus. I mean, there's a lot of main deck hate for us right now. Okay, Trophy is an interesting draw. Um, I still think we're supposed to just kind of cash our Liliana in here, despite the Relic. Okay, we get to buy back a uh, not very relevant threat, but it's something. Okay, here comes the relic, and uh, now I'm going to trophy this power plant. It's going to grow the, the goif, of course, and we've kind of got to keep them off of Tron, I think. And, you know, how many more relics can they really have? They do have Blast Zone, though, so it's going to come in with a counter. They can just, like, put it on two next turn. Yeah, I mean, we're in some trouble. I'll, I'll play the Scoos, I guess, instead of the second Goyf here, but we're in some trouble. We have, uh, we need to keep drawing land destruction effects, basically. Um, and we need to somehow keep clocking. You know, they haven't played out their Blast Zone yet, but the second tower is definitely good reason not to, I suppose. And they're just cracking eggs over there. And then there's an Oblivion Stone. 
Yikes, yikes, yikes. Okay. So, I mean, Liliana the Veil's an amazing card, but she came at just the wrong time. We really needed her a while ago. And running her out into the O-Stone is very unappealing, so... I think the line here is just to simply attack. And you know, to be fair, this does put them to six. They have a stirrings. Yeah, they're they're doing it. They're doing it over there. No doubt about that one. Okay, stirrings for Matt, Matt for power plant. With just enough conveniently to le left over to uh, activate the O-Stone. I guess the good news here is that we can force them to do so without uh, without having to animate Hissing Quagmire, and then we can actually make it a follow-up play. So that's what we'll do. So, am I, I kind of want to just play Tarmogoyf, right? Because, like, if they, uh, that just puts lethal on board. Um, you have to tap Blast Zone to put counters on it, and then you have to tap it again to sack it, so they can't kill it with Blast Zone. Uh, Karn the Great Creator. I mean, can make a blocker, maybe, but... You know, I think we're supposed to play Goyf. Really wish I had another play to make alongside it. Feels so bad, but... You know, if, if they have to lean on a Worm Coil engine to survive, you know, maybe Fatal Push can clean up the tokens after a Lily Edict, I don't know. You know, we're, we're getting close, despite some less-than-ideal goings on, but I'm still still don't feel like we're in a very good spot. Yep, there's the Karn. And of course it can tutor for who knows what. It's a worm coil. Okay. If we draw an untapped land we can take care of this all in one turn. And there's the Blast Zone. Into Chromatic Sphere. Alright. Untapped land. Okay, now do we hit them, or do we attack the Karn? I mean, they're just going to go get another Worm Coil engine maybe with Karn, potentially. So unfortunately, I think we have to attack Karn here. I mean, we're, we have Lethal on board next turn either way with Quagmire. And, you know, if they hadn't exiled our graveyard twice already, it would have been comfortably lethal with some bigger Tarmogoyfs along the way. And, of course, the Liliana the Last Hope would have still been in our yard, so we would have just had a clean six attack last turn, but again, we're in it. We're making them have yet more stuff after getting a really good uh, good curve out thus far. It's an interesting opening game, that's for sure. Okay, that forest that I believe has been in their hand this whole time. 
Another Karn. Well, we are max punished for attacking the other Karn. And that's probably very good for them in its own right. Ensnaring Bridge? What? Oblivion Stone. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Well, this is a new look for Tron. It's not one that I like particularly. So, I think we kind of have to play out the tracker here. Maybe force them to use the O-Stone earlier than they'd want to. Mica Synth Lattice. Okay, so here's the lock, right? Okay, so we can't... We can't do anything? Yeah. As far as I can tell. We just can't do anything here. All permanents are artifacts in addition to their other types. All cards that are not on the battlefield, spells and permanents are colorless. And I spend mana as though or mana of any color, but activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control cannot be activated. So we can't, yeah, can't do anything. Total lockout. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's a good game. It was a good game for sure. Uh, I feel, feel pretty unlucky here to have encountered all those relics main deck. These these Karns main deck seem very bad for us because our disruption for uh, Tron itself is not as relevant when they can just cast that on four naturally, right? But um, so this might be this might be a tough nut for us to crack just based on our evidence of of that one matchup at least. So. Let's consider here whether what we've seen changes any aspect of our normal plan against Tron. Obviously, I still think the land destruction effects are, are where we want to be. Um, I don't know that anything in our sideboard gets any better, necessarily, against that type of stuff, like we saw. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it really does, so... Yeah, let's just run it like this. Um, Graph Digger's Cage does not affect Karn uh, tutoring anything. Uh, neither does Ashiok, actually. Search your library only. But Ashiok is still good. Uh, or still better than some alternatives, anyway. All right, well, right away, I'm in a matchup where I wish I had my second Maelstrom Pulse. Not necessarily over Ashiok, but in addition to, would be nice. Um, I'd pretty, pretty freely cut a scoos for that. And, you know, that was still a close game one. We just got a really bad feeling lockout by the end of it, right? But it was a good game, and uh, yeah, we got to keep this hand. It's definitely not a bad one. Opponent keeping seven. Never, ever what you want to see out of a Tron player. Well, they've just got both Karns, two versus lands. <sighs> yeah, okay. Taking the map. Passing the turn. Power plant into sphere. We draw yet another land. So, of course, Thought Seize is the play. So, we can take stirrings. And maybe we are supposed to. Because right now they have all the payoffs, none of the mana. But of course, next turn they get to crack the sphere, make green, and, and cast stirrings right away before even deciding what to do. Um, 
I'm also interested in taking Karn the Great Creator, but I think we kind of have to take Stirrings here. They just rip another Stirrings off the top? Well, I mean... Could, could we possibly be any more punished for reasonable decisions? Yes, we can, because they find Urza's mine. <laughs> All right, and they found Expedition Map? You can't make it up, guys. You can't make it up. You literally couldn't make this up. Yeah, so we've just got to take them off of mine and then make them go waste a turn activating their map and not having Tron, I guess. But literally could not have been better top decks for our opponent. Okay, we have Trophy. Pretty good. Yep, play the Goyf. Wait till they activate the map, and then we'll uh, probably trophy the tower, I think, is the second thing they found. Now, of course, the problem with this is they're just going to cast um, cast their new Karn just on curve, but we cannot beat Karn Liberated at all, so we need to do this anyway. And maybe we'll be able to just attack the Karn down, the, uh, the great creator. Sylvan Scrying. My goodness. Yeah, they sure do rip the good stuff, huh? Okay. So now we're at least able to beat a Karn Liberated with our board, despite it being pretty bad for us. Cracking the sphere end step, it's not something you see every day, but they're just looking for another draw without having to use their mana, I guess. Warping Whale to make an Eldrazi Scion. You got it. It's a little worrisome, given the fact that we know they have Tron, but they're going on the Great Creator plan, so maybe this is just a chump blocker. Okay. Are they just going to get... Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what they get. If they get Ensnaring Bridge, it actually becomes awkward to crack a clue. They get Worm Coil. Okay, they're just making Worm Coil, sure. Oh, yeah, that was a punt. I didn't crack my clue. In response to the Karn, well, that's not good. We draw another Tireless Tracker.
yep, we're just dead to the to this lock. He goes and gets the Mycosynth Lattice next turn. They play Karn Liberated. We're just very dead. Um, let's see if our top card mattered. Treetop Village. Didn't matter in the least. Did not matter in the least. So that seems so bad for us. I mean, granted, the opponent drew really well both games. Our, our top decks were okay. They were not great. Our opening hands were not great. They were they were fine, though. But, geez, compared to traditional Tron, that seems like an absolute nightmare for us. And that's saying something, you know, because Tron is a boogeyman deck for us, despite the fact that it uh, has been, been definitely beatable in the recent past. But, yikes, I don't know about that particular version. Let's hope it does not catch on. Let's hope it's just bad against the rest of the meta. So this is a blue-white control deck with triple Field of Ruin. Uh, this is an uncounterable negate, Dovin's Veto. Lots of new tech. Uh, so, I mean, we don't really care about much here, I guess. Um, I think I'm going to take D-Sphere. I was thinking about the Verdict, but their mana is so awkward that they might be a ways away from that. And our mana is not really much... I shouldn't say that. I was going to say our mana is not really much better. Nothing to do with our mana. It is our progression that's not great, but... They did find an island. So there's only one unknown in hand... We're just drawing lands. I mean, we have so many lands that I think we are still supposed to slow roll this tracker, even though it's very bad, like, in most ways. This is just all our hand is doing, is playing the tracker and making a bunch of clues, right? So, like, we can't, we can't just expose it to a potential removal spell without first uh, moving to turn four anyway. Good. Okay. Um... So we're going to get Tomb off of this. And I think I'm going to go for it main phase because we know they have a verdict anyway. All right, it works. Good. So. Yeah, they might just verdict away this tracker, which of course is a three for one for us. And we draw Inquisition, so that is a fine place to begin, I suppose. So they have only lands in hand. Cool. Lots of utility, though. Minamo School at Water's Edge is interesting. Um, we have a free attack with Quagmire, but it's pretty clearly better to try to find a threat here, and we find a good one. It's a Bob. Um... They have a colonnade. We have a lot of lands without having had to go get any basics yet, so I think it's a little better to get a forest here than to shock in the tomb, but you could obviously go either way, no big deal. Regardless. They play a field, they pass the turn. We flip Kalidus. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty happy. I was a little careful with my life total before, I guess. Uh, yeah, we attack. And playing the Kalidus here is pretty awkward, because then we'd have to shock in to hold up Trophy. So I think we just play another Bob. Play out this tomb tapped. Uh, that Kalidas flip was horrible because now we can't. Now we kind of have to either trophy or clue, not both. Um, well, unless they give us mana here by fielding, in which case I might just crack a clue on my own end step. I think I'm gonna.
Is opponent fielding again? Or what is this? It, they are. Um, yeah. I mean, we'll float a mana just, I guess, in case, because we have a, a clue coming. Lily of the Veil. Too bad we're on the end step or we could just jam her. Um, free window to hit that colonnade with a trophy, but I don't think we're really supposed to. So I'll just pass. Opponent will lead off with an opt. Bottom with the opt, plays an island. All right, now on the end step, I'm going to trophy the uh, colonnade. Nice. Okay. This gives us free reign to jam our Liliana. Hopefully our bob triggers don't hurt us too much more. One and zero. I'll take that. And another Lily for turn. We'll attack with both here. They could play Settle the Wreckage. I don't think we can play around that. Let's try Liliana. Counter draw with the cryptic command. Fine, we got another one. Don't know if I should pitch this fetch land or a fatal push. I think I actually am gonna pitch the fetch land. Our life total is low enough that I kind of want to keep these pushes in case of, uh, you know, Snapcaster Mage beats and, of course, other colonnades is the main threat. So our position is, is very good, but anything can happen still from here between the top decking ability of the blue-white deck and also the Bob triggers. We lose two from our first Bob and then we lose none from the second. All right, opponent has three in hand. Thought seizes our draw. Yeah, I don't know if we're even really able to cast that. I don't think we are. Like, I really think the life loss is the biggest threat here, so I'm actually going to choose to take up and pitch my Thought Seize. Spreading Seas from the opponent. That's a blast from the past as far as blue-white decks go. Okay, Bob's get in, and my play here this turn is Kalidus, because, again, the life is what worries me kind of at the moment. Um, deciding on Blooming Marsh. I'll play it. We'll play the marsh. Surgical on trophy. Okay, that's annoying because we've got one in hand, obviously, but I guess we use it. Um, we can trophy their field in response, then our trophy will fizzle, but it forces a field activation. And our trophy fizzling is actually fine, because that doesn't ramp them, so that's what we'll do. Main deck surgical extraction. Lots of lots of interesting stuff over there. Alright, they let the trophy resolve, so... They did have a fifth island to get as well. Vendillion click. Okay, that's a little scary, to be honest. They're going to click themselves. Oh, no, they clicked us, took away a push. I was going to say, uh, yeah. Yep, that, I mean, the flash three power flyer is, uh, is pretty good. Let's hope we don't die to our own bob triggers, please. Couldn't take it after that walloping at the hands of Tron.
Yep, coming right at us. I mean, there's almost no way we literally die to Bob Triggers this turn. We'd have to hit two three drops off of them, because we already have our Kalidus. And we hit Inquisition plus... Wow, okay, we've got a lot of, a lot of stuff here. So, I guess we just take up with Lily here. Pick our Inquisition? Or a Swamp, even? Hang on to Inquisition. Snapcaster Mage. Yikes. What a good last card for them to have. Targeting Cryptic Command. Alright, so in response, I'm going to Fatal Push the Snap. And Abrupt Decay cannot be countered, so... I guess we hang on to our Inquisition here. We'll get rid of Swamp. We'll play a Treetop for the turn. See if the opponent goes for the tap down here. They do. Tap down and draw. So, do we Inquisition here is the big question. I think we just go for it. It's a high upside play. Nice. Very nice. Decay your click. Get a zombie. Play a treetop. I'm going to turn off my auto yields in case there's any way I can respond to my own Bob Triggers. But that's, I think, the only way we <laughs> lose from here. You know, as if we just died a Bob here. Or if the cryptic chain makes it so we can't ever finish the game before the bob triggers kill us all right we only take two off of two flips that's pretty good pulling scoops to that all right well that was an intense game that was a hairy game and uh we came away with the win i will take it uh some unusual stuff going on in the opponent's main deck as far as the stock blue white stuff goes but that is uh, kind of what's going on right now with War of the Spark. I've seen I've seen a lot of stuff in my few games that I've played out of blue-white control. It's kind of all over the place. Um, Collective Brutality, Liliana, The Last Hope, Fulminator Mage, at least one Nile Spellbomb. These cards are all good. I, I wonder about Liliana's Triumph. I don't think so, but, you know, if they're a, a Vendelian click build, that could be useful, but still probably not. Still think these... The second spell bomb is better than that, and we probably don't have much more to cut. Um, we could consider leaving in one Fatal Push, again, because it is a Vendelian Click build. We'll still cut most of them. We'll still cut a Blooming Marsh. We will still cut clunky threats like a Kalidus and a Skuse. We bring in these six for sure. That's a clean six for six, and then... Yeah, we probably either just play a spell bomb or a push. I mean, I think exactly one fatal push is is pretty interesting, especially on the draw. And this new tech has got to be pushing some stuff out. So maybe they're not playing like with search for his content, not with as many snapcaster mages. I think their build leads me to believe that. So I'm gonna make the unorthodox call of leaving in one fatal push whereas against a lot of more stock looking blue white decks i would probably just bring in the second spell bomb here we will see how it goes i will be willing to revise this call um if we have a game three which hopefully we do not so yeah uh nice nice game one here This hand is uh, is fine, not great, but it's a keep. It's a solid functional hand. Turn 1 Inquisition is nice. Turn 2 Tarmogoyf is sometimes nice. Okay, Dark Confidant. That's looking like a good draw. Inquisition you. Okay, they have Spell Snare Opt Condemn. Pretty clearly I have to take the Spell Snare here. And 
this is going to make us want to play turn 2 Bob and probably not attack with him, at least for a while. Hand information. Very nice. Very nice against blue-white control, to state the obvious. Okay, opponent's got the planes. We've got the collective brutality, which is fine, but... First we bob. Opt-in response. You know, they could have Detention Sphere as an answer here. Maybe they just um, have something like Oust, but how many of these kind of janky white removal spells like Condemn and Oust can they really be running? I don't know. They might be deciding whether to path. Yeah. Just main phasing path? I mean, I think... Yeah. I think they're supposed to wait until our upkeep, at least. But... I'll take it. Okay, Tireless Tracker would be our best draw here. Come on, Tracker. No, it's a Blooming Marsh. Ah, uh, that's not good. That's not good. So, I think I like leading off on Collective Brutality here to get that, probably just get that Cryptic Command out of their hand. Yep, now they've got a Snap in hand too. That's not good either for us, but we still take the Cryptic even though they're not able to cast it yet. We're obviously playing for the long game here. And... <clears throat> we do play out the Goyf, even though they have the tools to handle it. It's kind of uh, pricing them into that play. Maybe having a snap path, or if, if nothing else. They went top with that opt. So it's snap, condemn... One unknown in hand, they did hit their fourth land. So our Goyf just trades with Condemn if we attack. So let's play a Dark Confidant here. Play a Treetop and say go. They've got the freedom to snap path here, but that's better for us than, like, condemn and then having snap condemn up at some later point in the game. Or maybe they just field. No, it is Snapcaster, sure. Okay, we're getting uh, ramped like crazy here. Just kind of need to draw some gas to take advantage of it, really. Because right now they can answer everything. Our trophy doesn't do much. They have Field for Treetop. They have Condemn for Tarmogoyf. So we need, like, the tracker, like I identified last turn, would have been the best draw. We need something like that. We need Tracker, Planeswalker, things like this. They went bottom with that th uh, third opt of the game. Thought Seize is a pretty good draw, admittedly. Let's go with the Thought Seize. They've got Teferi. They've got another Snapcaster, and they've still got that Condemn. It's pretty bad for us, guys. It's pretty bad. Um, I think we have to take... I don't know. I mean, normally I'd say we'd ha we have to take the Teferi, but like just leaving them with Snap Opt isn't great. Snap Condemn is obviously the big issue. Snap Cryptic is down the road. Huh. This is a tough call. Um... Okay, I am going to take the Teferi here. And like if we, even if we fire up with Treetop and try to attack with both, they field the Treetop and then they condemn the Goyf. So we're just in a, in a holding pattern. 
which is very bad for us in this matchup, but I think it's the correct way to pilot it. Again, we're really hoping to top deck more discard, um, planeswalkers, tireless trackers. Like, we've got a lot of live draws. Alright, come on, top deck. Another Goyf. That's so bad. That's so bad against Snapcaster Condemn. We're going to play it out. And I'm still passing. I mean, it feels wrong in a way, but again, like with the amount of top decks we have to disrupt their hand, to disrupt the graveyard. We can draw Scoozes, Spell Bombs, to make Snapcaster less good. I think we just have to play out our stuff and just try to top deck here. <sighs> Alright, so they've got Condemn, Snap, Condemn, just ready to go. We're just passing. Maybe this is, maybe this is awful. Maybe, I mean... But there's no point at which if we made them have it, it would have benefited us, right? Like, it, or not make them have it, but make them use it. So, think we're, think we're supposed to be doing this? They've got a Spreading Seas for a non-man land, which is totally fine with me. Okay, and they're kind of tapped low, so a great top deck any day now. Maelstrom Pulse is... Is not really it, but I think this is enough to make me want to send in the Goyfs here. We can at least pulse the two Snapcasters, potentially. Okay, we gain five. And they can't profitably snap here. Do they just have another... They have like a path in hand or something? Another Condemn? Well, when I said you can only play so many of those janky uh, one-of <laughs> white removal spells, I didn't consider that they might actually be running to Condemn. It's another thing that's just quite good against us. Not gonna lie. Abrupt Decay. Sure. At least we got... Uh, what, we gained 10 life from those two Condemns? So the Snapcaster clock is not exactly real, but... The longer this game goes, the worse it gets for us. Especially with top decks like this. With friends like this, who needs enemies? With top decks like this, who needs an opponent? And we have such a window in this game, it's unbelievable. We're just not drawing the stuff. We're really not drawing the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so many bombs in the deck, so many good plays. That we could, in theory, be have been riding to victory by now. Okay, Liliana the Veil. So, I'm going to begin with a trophy on the colonnade where we'll see if this draws anything out. As far as counter magic goes, it does not. Okay. So, let's play the Lily. Maybe she'll resolve, maybe she will not. But, okay, they've got another snap for Cryptic. Yeah. Yeah, we did know about that one, didn't we? Whatever. This is a, this is actually a fine way to get that out of their hand. Then we're going to pulse the Snapcasters, and we're in theory even on resources. The big problem is, you know, it's blue-white control. They're probably out top decking us, but we'll see. Alright, so now, you know, 
the opponent's got a Planeswalker here, we're probably just dead. But it's Teferi. Oh no, it's Dragonlord Ojutai. Now we get our tracker after all that time. Well, let's see if she resolves. Okay. Definitely just going for the second clue right now. Pathing in response. Yep. And now our fetch is blanked, I believe. Looks like we have every fetchable out on the field or in the hand. Sure do. Okay, well. Looking for Liliana of the Veil here for the Edict. What's it going to be, opponent? What's it going to be? Tarmogoyf. Not exactly what we were in the market for, but it's a play. It can race the Dragon Lord, kind of, although we're behind on life. Yeah, um, so my, my instinct here is that we just bricked for too long in the the big window for us to take over this game, and now we're going to lose. Uh, Dragonlord Ojutai is a 5-4 with flying. Hexproof, when it's untapped, they can untap it with this card, Minamo School at Water's Edge. Uh, with just two mana, basically, they can give it Hexproof in response to removal. And they can just have it like a mini Search for Ascanta style effect although it's not limited to non-creature spells um, every time it connects. So Liliana, the last hope. Uh, yeah. Yeah, not very good. Got another cryptic command. That'll be enough for me if so. Because um, I just... Don't want to use up more of my clock. Okay, she resolves, so I guess we play it out. Just play fast. And they didn't give the Dragon Lord Hexproof in a response, so we've actually successfully increased the clock by a turn. Probably won't matter, but that is just what happened. And to be fair, I guess it's probably correct for them to not give it Hexproof in a response, because then we could respond to the trigger with, like, an Assassin's Trophy, if we had one. Which we don't. <laughs> Colonnade. Well, that'll finish us off. Alright, so we're just... We're just dead. <clears throat> Alright, so maybe they're not playing around that. Maybe they just didn't see the line the first time. I don't know. And we're dead. We'll just make them use up these last seconds of clock, and then we'll go to game three. So, yeah, we, uh, we bricked in the mid-game. We bricked in the mid-game. We had uh, a draw that lined up awkwardly against their opening hand of Condemns and Snapcaster Mages, and... Oh, wow, they didn't fire up Colonnade. Okay, the game goes on. Sure, we'll use up a little more of their clock. Yeah, I mean, Lily of the Veil, we've got to... We've got to try to resolve her, I guess. So we're going to mill with Last Hope just to try to find a threat to... Yeah, it didn't work. Didn't work. A threat to draw out counter magic with, maybe. Okay, now they've got the cryptic that they thought about using on our Lily the Last Hope a few turns back. Bouncing the goif. Sure. Whoops. Oh, well... 
Okay, doesn't matter. I was going to replay the goif, but... Okay, we're dead. Um... Yeah, tough game. Tough loss there. Uh, good to know about Dragon Lord Ojutai. And look, it's yet another matchup where I miss my second Maelstrom Pulse. Not that it's like a game-winning card most of the time, but it's just a, you know, a nice tool in the toolbox here. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe we just want the second Spellbomb after having seen at least... We, we know there's at least two Snapcasters. I think Spellbomb's just fine. Probably just better than Fatal Push. Otherwise, we are simply running it back here against Blue-White Control and hoping for some better luck on the play. Ojitai is a is a good finisher. I I don't I don't know if that means they're definitely not on terminus. They don't seem to be. Like we haven't seen it. We haven't even seen Jace. And they certainly seem to play some somewhat high density of creatures with main deck Vendi, with that Ojutai and, and so on. Uh, and of course we saw Supreme Verdict main deck, so I would I would venture to guess they are not on Terminus. And uh, that is increasingly the trend for these blue-white control decks. I think Esper Control has showed the way forward, or at least a way forward, right, with the recent success playing more spot removal, more value pieces, like in the case of Esper, it's Esper Charm and Kaya. The three mana planeswalker. Blue white control is playing more like Vendillion clicks, detention spheres, even cards like Gideon of the Trial. I've seen the new Narset at three mana, the new Teferi at three mana. Um, and then apparently stuff like Ojutai. So it's actually a lot more like the it's going back to how more more like how the deck used to look when I played it. Uh, which was a who knows, like a year and a half ago now, before I got into BGX. Uh, no, two years ago now. And, of course, we I didn't have access to Teferi back then, and that's a big, big difference maker. Like, even if you're not playing Jace, just Teferi at the 5-drop. I was playing Gideon Jura. Little little different. Little different, I would uh, I would venture to, to claim. But... I'm starting to wonder how how much I want to get my choke back into my sideboard because blue-white control seems like it's never really going to go away even when it's not that well positioned, and it seems like it got a ton of new toys, so I guess we're just going to kind of see what War of the Spark brings, but okay, opponent goes all the way down to zero on the uh, on the timer here for sideboarding. Would have been nice if that happened between games one and two, because then it would probably mean they did not actually register a sideboard, a sideboard at 60. But in any case, let's see what we can do here. Uh, thought sees collect. Yeah, this is a keep for sure. It's a keep. We just really need to naturally draw lands. We don't have the. Uh, I'm going to go with Quagmire here. Um, we don't have the turn two Bob to really make that happen. But maybe we'll draw one. Or Yeah, we just draw a third land. So third land, what does that make us want to do? Um, I think we just try to jam the Tarmogoyf here. They could have Spell Snare, but if they don't... If they do, we can even buy it back with Lily the Last Hope. So, if Tarmogoyf lives, we get to clear the way for its attacks next turn with potentially a double discard spell turn. They just have the spell snare. That would stink, but it's only opt. So, bottom with the opt, and then pass. Then we'll pass to them. We draw Fulminator. Uh, no target for Fulminator, but it's a fine card for sure. So let's play a land first in case they are packing a spell snare, and then we will begin with the Thoughtseize. Okay. 
Dovin's veto. Fine with me. How aggressive with our life total do we want to be? I think we can afford to get a basic here. And then we will successfully resolve a discard spell. And we get timely reinforcements. Okay, so that's a fine take. They have three lands, Snapcaster, Mage, Jace. Well, they're clearly on Jace. Like I said in the sideboard, we hadn't seen it yet. Um, it might be correct to simply Fulminator here. I think I'm going to. And I think I'm going to try it main phase, because if it works, we get to grow the Goyf. That's really nice, the Fulminator there with uh, them having Jason Snapcaster in hand. And then, of course, we can buy back the Fulminator if we want with Lily. They play Island. All right, let's go get our other Overgrown Tomb painlessly. Okay, Swamp. So our first move here is to simply attack. And this is going to be pretty nice. So, or potentially pretty nice. So we play Skews, and they might just snap Optin response, in which case we can play Last Hope, tick up to kill the Snapcaster, which is pretty good. And, of course, they have to resolve this opt before knowing what's going to happen, so that's cool, too. Alright, the opponent is officially on the ropes. They do have a Jace here. Um, and a whole lot of unknowns in hand. But, you know, we actually just have lethal on field. I don't know if they notice that, but we sure do. Um, so let's take it. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know if the opponent had any alternative plays here. I would imagine not. But even if they didn't, I think they're just supposed to Jace on summon the Tarmogoyf. Like, you can't just... Can't just give us lethal. I guess they didn't notice it, but we had it two different ways. We could either fire up Colonnade or eat the two creatures with our ooze. And uh, either way, that's eight damage. So we could even do nine damage here if we wanted to. So yeah, um, I'll take it. Take it. Good game. Uh, really feels good to beat Blue-White Control. It is, it is a beatable matchup. Um, it's just not a great one. So we got rocked by Tron in round one, but... But we're back. We're back on the uh, in the 500 column here. Really, uh, really had to earn our win against Blue White Control. So that's enough unfavorable matchups for the day, huh? Let's get some. Uh, let's get some more desirable pairings, please. And here we go. Winning the die roll for round three. Yeah, our hand is fine. Uh, if you ignore this Kalidus, uh, it functions totally on two mana, so Kalidus gives us a top end to draw toward as far as our lands go. It's a pretty good keep. In a blind matchup here. And the opponent will take a mulligan. Keeping six. Scrying to the bottom. Here comes our Thoughtseize. And it is burned, so my wish has been granted. It's a favorable matchup, or at least a pretty reasonable one. Um, so they're going to go turn one Swifty. We're going to go Collective Brutality, taking away Boros Charm. And it pro I don't know if we fully escalate. It depends on what we draw. So with that in mind, we're going to be putting Sorcery Creature. They're going to probably be putting Land into the Yard pretty soon. Um... 
I think we just take lightning bolts here because our Tarmogoyf... No, I think we think... Yeah, I think we take... Sorry, I'm going to take Searing Blaze. You could take either Blaze or Bolt. A big appeal to taking Bolt there is to kind of make it so they're definitely playing a creature turn one, but there's just no way they're they're going to do otherwise, right? There's just no way. I'm trying to see whether the Goyf would survive, but yeah, as expected, they get a land in there. So the Goyf would have survived that no matter what. So it is definitely Collective Brutality time. We're definitely escalating at least once. Um, so what we could do here is just pitch... I think Abrupt Decay, even though... I think we're supposed to pitch Abrupt Decay for sure. And... Ooh, it would hurt to pitch Kalidus. Maybe we just don't pitch Kalidus. Maybe we just keep the rest of our cards in hand, because they're all really good. I can buy that. So Escalating only once for a total of two modes seems a little weird, but I believe it to be correct here. Um, kill your Swifty, take a card from your hand. Picture Decay. Boros Charm is the take. Opponent is left with only Lightning Bolt and lands. We draw Tracker, not not very good, not too bad though, I guess. And I really like keeping the Treetop Village, of course, because not if we're going to keep Kalidus, we have to keep our land, especially if it's a, a good land like that. Alright, we draw Trophy. Not the greatest. I think we're just playing Tracker here. After we attack with Goyf. Tracker could trade with a Lightning Bolt, and that's really fine with me. Them having two burn spells for the Goyf would also have been fine with me, like two bolts. And it looks like they might. But if so, they're not going to go for it. Two turn clock. Wow, land Swifty Swifty with a bolt in hand. Alright, I was worried about... Alright, they're attacking. So they can grow to a 2-3. Which my tracker trades with, so I'm trading. And they just bolt us, and they're empty-handed. We draw Inquisition right on time. Um, yep, so... Uh, yeah, I think we attack. Obviously, the alternative here is just to kill their Swifty with Trophy, which is fine, too. I think it's fine either way. Don't think we're losing a game one from this position. And we didn't. Okay, good. Very, very nice. So, admittedly, even though I, I requested a, a favorable matchup and this is one, my particular 75 at the moment is pretty soft to burn because we're playing four bobs and three thought seizes. Some people are only on three and two of each. So all those cards have to come out. And we don't have that much to bring in that's awesome. Like, Collective Brutality is our only real anti-burn card. Um, Fulminator Mages come in, but then from there, like, the new tech, uh, Ashiok can shut off fetch lands. I don't think that's worth doing. Um, we don't even have our Maelstrom Pulse to bring in for, like, suboptimal removal at, at this particular juncture. So, uh, maybe Liliana... I think Liliana's Triumph is coming in. So it's cool we get to play with the card, even though I wouldn't really call it good in this matchup. Um, yeah, we, we have a lot of suboptimal cards to bring in. We might be bringing in a Lily the Last Hope as well, which is truly terrible. Uh, like, if I was teched for burn at all, 
I would probably be siding out my main deck, Lily. Not bringing in my sideboarded one, right? But there's just nothing else for us to do here. Um, unless we want to play, like, a Nile Spellbomb just as a, a cantrip that might possibly grow the goif. That might legitimately be better than Last Hope. But... I actually don't think I like it because Scooze is such a good stabilizer in the game. I don't really want to clear out any graveyards, you know? Um, so we'll just have a, a couple... We'll just have some pretty suboptimal cards in the matchup, but at least they're definitely nowhere near as suboptimal as Dark Confidant and Thoughtseize, right? And the natural way our two-color mana base and a lot of our cards line up, uh, well, we're certainly mulling here. Double scoos, nothing else. I think we have to keep this and just hope we our top decks fill in the gap here. Certainly bottoming another land. Well, you know, we could have considered keeping that with uh, Goblin Guide in mind, but I don't think that's correct. Here's the Goblin Guide. Fatal Push. That's a good draw. That's a really good draw. So... Opponent shocks in. They're not attacking. They're not doing anything. Still gonna push here, but uh, that is interesting. Well, they made the right call, apparently. So I am going to run out of scoos here, um, because at least they cannot Searing Blaze out on our turn, and of course we have another one to follow up, and our hand does literally nothing else. So I think we have to play the Scoos there, even though with like a with a better hand it would be very, very loose potentially to run that out immediately. Oh, they've got a Relic, that's pretty bad. Relic away their Goblin Guide. We draw Lily, sweet. Question is, do we attack with Scoos? Attacking is bad against a, you know, haste creature from the other side, but I think we're probably just supposed to. And unfortunately, we have to uh, pitch our Swamp here and keep our Fetch Land simply because we don't have the green mana to make Scooz any good otherwise. And granted, Relic is making sure Scooz isn't very good anyway. And we might just die to burn. Probably will. But we've got to play to our strengths, right? I mean, a couple Boros Charms is pretty bad. We get, do get a burn spell out of their hand, though. Skewer the Critics is gone. They hit us with Skullcrack. They hit us with Skewer. We're down to three. They have a Relic for a redraw. Yeah, we're pretty dead. Um, so I guess we are supposed to make the highest upside plays here, which means ticking our Liliana up for asymmetrical discard that hurts us, but shouldn't matter much either way. The opponent will either draw the missing burn spell that they need, or they won't, and we can miraculously stabilize. Like, if they draw, like, a land and a creature here, you know... And then we rip, like, Collective Brutality, or whatever. Goblin Guide, okay, there's a creature. Here's the attack. And they're making this trade happen. Oh, another Lily on the top's not very good. They're making us take this trade so they can clear out the yards with Relic, which is a good play.
Okay, they're not just cracking relic though. In okay, they are. Hopefully, there's something uncastable in hand. We're obviously just still dead to a burn spell, but Swifty. Oh, second main phase Swifty. That is good for us. So we edict. We eat. And then is it worth playing the second Lily just to get like one higher loyalty? I don't know. I don't think that matters, so I'm just going to hang on to her. They drew land. Okay. We're still not in a good position, but we draw a field of ruin. All right, well, now I'm pretty happy to do this. And... We don't get anywhere from exposing our field here. Or from deploying it, rather. But maybe we're actually just supposed to because we have a Liliana around. Sure. All right. We could just miraculously get there. Stranger things have happened. Let's tick up. Skull crack to the face. You got it. So. I actually think we're supposed to only attack with the ooze here because we're dead to a creature if we attack with quagmire. We're dead to a burn spell no matter what we do. We should have lethal next turn no matter what we do. The only exception is if they draw like a non-burn removal spell like Path to Exile next turn, then they can path our scoos and get another turn, whereas they'd be dead this turn. All right, they drew Bolt anyway. So, uh, close game, close game, good game. We uh, had absolutely nothing going on. We still almost got there, so I'll take it. But I really want to win win game three here on the on the play. Obviously, no changes able to be made with, <laughs> with our current seventy five. So we're gonna run it back. Shout out to my buddy Chris here, local friend who plays Burn, who was very surprised to hear me be so cavalier about the Burn matchup. Now, to be fair, I'm not like oh Burn is a free win or anything, but I'm I'm just saying. I think Burn is, is naturally a pretty favorable matchup, and uh, I think my results have borne that out, but right now I'm, I've kind of got my pants down as far as being prepared for Burn goes. We've got only two Brutality, no Kitchen Finks, um, and then of course the main deck, heavy on the life loss relative to average, so we'll see. All right, you've got to be kidding me, deck. What is this? Obvious mulligan. This is a very poor six, but I guess we're keeping when they maul. Yeah, I mean, Abrupt Decay's fine. Yeah, the Lily Fulminator Mage Loop. Yeah, I guess we keep. Opponent down to five. That's really good for us. Uh, we'll bottom a land. And we're going to run out Catacombs for a couple reasons here. Number one, if they have a turn one goblin guide it lets us decide whether or not to uh like it gives us a pseudo scry and they do so we'll see what happens there is a fulminator mage on top i'm gonna shuffle that away Another land is pretty bad. We really need help with this hand, but at least we have an answer to Goblin Guy. That's the that's the main thing. All right. Um, 
we are still gonna we are still gonna decay this just because we definitely have things to do that are valuable on turn three fatal push is an okay draw not great not bad And they might have Searing Blaze here, but if so, you know, it's not the worst it would... It is still correct to play the Fulminator here. Boros Charm. So that's going to resolve. I'm just deciding whether or not to hit them with the Fulminator right now. I think because they mulligan so low, I'm going to. But it's bad against a haste creature. Alright, they've got the land, so we're punished for that decision. But next turn we get to go Liliana, buy it back. Hold up Fatal Push if we don't draw anything better. They're going to exile a Rift Bolt, they're going to Lava Spike us, they're down to one card in hand. Our draws have been bad. Draws have been pretty bad. But at least... At least we're kind of doing things, but we need, we need like a real threat. Um, Tireless Tracker might actually be better than Fulminator Mage here. It's, sometimes it's really not in the matchup, but... Alright, so the opponent's hopefully just off of white. Um... Liliana of the Veil is a fine one, I suppose. I think we have to play her. And probably just pitch Pulse. Skullcrack. All right, we get we get burn out of their hand, so that's a thing. But with no threat this whole time, we have been uh, we have not been really doing well. So we'll take up. Please don't have burn. In response, doesn't look like they do. It's a skewer. Okay, good, good. So I believe the correct play here is to mill with Liliana in case we get something really high value like Scooz or Goyf. If not, we at least have something guaranteed to buy back. Uh, we get a Goyf. Goyf is better than Tracker here for sure because we can't really afford to crack this fetch. So let's play the Goyf, put him on a three turn clock. Swifty. So I think I'm supposed to just edict that away with Liliana. We'll play out some stuff here. But again, we can't really crack that fetch, even though it'd be so good. Relic! Wow! What a top deck. Really good top deck. Big question, though, is whether they do it now and, like, they might... Whatever they find might get stuck in the hand with Lily, so... Their best draw here is almost land, but... In any case, alright, we draw another fetch land. That's pretty bad, but... It's at least a free pitch to our Liliana. I'm pitching that no matter what else I draw, so I'll just do it first, see what the opponent loses. Another skewer. Well, those have been clunky for the opponent. They're scooping? They're scooping. I mean, it's close enough. I would have probably played it out, but fair enough. Let's see what our... Uh... Okay, don't know what our next cards are. Doesn't matter, got there. Okay, I mean... Sure. <laughs> I I do I do think we had that wrapped up without a white land. There's probably no one card they could have that that saves them. 
and they know what's in their 60. We don't. So uh, perhaps the scoop was just empirically correct there. I just didn't expect it, that's all. But hey, we did it. We beat Burn. Uh, so hey, take that, Chris. We beat Burn again. <laughs> I'm only joking. It's, uh, it is often very close, but I do believe we're favored... It might be closer to 50-50 with my particular setup because I'm very... I'm, I'm not respecting Burn at the moment. I think we just have bigger fish to fry. All right, my friends, 2-1. and one. Really hoping for a 4-1 and one here. Let's just close this out. Close this league out here. We've got a lot of a lot of pretty unplayable hands though, and this is definitely one of them. Like we've got too many three drops to make this risky keep at all worth considering. So we'll mulligan. Okay, this is a better risky keep, and I don't want to go to five at all. So I'm gonna keep this. Just trying for a land. Is it burn again? Okay, well, I just talked a bunch of trash about Burn, so let's hope we don't just get run over here. No land from Goblin Guide is miserable, but another Inquisition is fine. We just really need there to be a land on top of our deck. If we have that, we have a chance. Oh, they have a one-lander, and I don't know what's going on over here. Rampaging Ferocidon. Okay, Menace can't gain life. 3-3. Three, three. ETB deals 1. Good value, I guess. Um, and a Chandra? I, maybe I'm supposed to know what this deck is, but I simply don't. I'm going to take the Swifty. I think we got to take a creature here. Got to take a 1-drop as well. Really hoping for a land on top. Come on, Goblin Guide. Show us the land, big guy. You can do it. Yes, it's a Field of Ruin. That's a pretty bad one, but it's a land. We might just be priced into playing the Bob here. See what we draw. It's a trophy. So it's either play the Bob or play an Inquisition. I guess it should just be the Inquisition, but it means we're taking another two on board, but... We don't necessarily have the ability to cleanly answer, like, the Ferocidon, for example. Um, but they've got two Boros Charms as well, and we're just... Those are a more immediate concern. So, we're definitely not in good shape, but we're not just automatically losing because of a Maul to a One-Lander. So, there's that. Lava Spike. Alright. Another land? Yeah, another land. Beautiful. And yet another land. Cool. So. The most... Yeah, it's not actually mana efficient to play Scoos because we only have one... Yeah, we only have one... Uh, what's it called? Green source. So we have to have an inefficient turn here and just simply play the Tarmogoyf, but... Hopefully that's enough to stem the bleeding here. Ah, uh, they hit their second land. That is uh, bad news. Very bad news, indeed. And we don't hit an untapped green source, so we're actually just dead of the Boros Charms. Uh, sad but true. We're playing the Scoos here in hopes that they don't, uh, they just panic at the sight of a Scoos and point something at it instead of charming our face, but... Oh, wait, is there only one... 
they only have three cards left. Was there only one Boros Charm left in their hand? What, am, what did I miss? I mean, we're dead to regular burn anyway, but... They have a Lightning Helix, sure. Okay, I guess they only had one Boros Charm left in hand. I, I mistracked, but... Well... Okay, I mean... We mulled to a really sketchy six against burn. You know, the game one against burn is, is often what's the, what the tough one is. But losing the game one stinks, because now we have to win both post-side games, including being on the play, or including being on the draw. And as always, my, uh, <laughs> my list is not up to scratch for the matchup, but that's okay. Uh, we can do it. Bye-bye, Bobby. Bye bye Thoughtseize. Yeah, we also draw drew two bobs there in a in a burn matchup. It's not where we want to be. Let's do it again. We were pretty close to stabilized though. We had Kalidus in hand. Couldn't cast it on curve, couldn't quite survive long enough to do it. But we were we were very close there. This hand is very mediocre, but it is a keep. Gotta hope the opponent, like, mulligans here and then is on a pretty creature-dependent plan. If this was a Lily of the Veil vale instead of a Last Hope, I would be uh, a lot more optimistic than I currently am. All right, Dis uh, Scooz is a, is a good draw given our progression, kind of. Like, again, if they don't have the creatures, then who knows how it's going to go, but... Okay, nothing on turn one from the opponent, so this might be a... What's it called? Eidolon hand? Probably is. Or not. Or if it is, they're not exposing it yet. Interesting. I mean, I'm just kind of slamming Liliana this turn, I think. Lily of the Veil, now there's a good draw. Okay. So this should get some stuff out of their hand no matter what happens. Should absorb some damage no matter what happens. And I think we're just pitching our last hope here. Even though there are windows where she's fine, you know, like if we lose our scoos, buying it back is, is kind of big game, but... I'd rather just keep my scoos plus my handful of removal, I suppose. It's also worth keeping, considering keeping the lower curve stuff because the mana efficiency. Oh, they got Boros Charm. Okay, well, you know, Liliana's a gain for and gets a land away. Sure, that's like the floor of the card in that situation. That's fine with me. I was going to say, it's also kind of nice to keep the lower curve stuff as well. Players can't gain life. Well, it's definitely time to kill you. I just don't know if I want to... I think I actually do just trophy this thing away. Like, they have a basic planes. Wow, that's really unusual. Like, giving them mana is not that big a deal anymore, and... uh I'd rather do it on my own terms when I'm not, like, uh, enabling the landfall of Searing Blaze, basically. They fetch Main Phase. They've got Chandra, okay. Kind of forgot about the Chandra. Should probably have used my push on the creature. Fortunately, I do have another trophy. Blood Moon. Major yikes. Yeah, I really don't know what I'm up against. It's like Burn Prison. Uh, get a Forest. Or a Swamp, rather, of course. Um, kind of got a trophy the Chandra. Alright, so this is like a real prison deck with real prison elements, but just a heavy burn element as well. Uh, 
Collective Brutality? What do I do with that? I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that, because they could have more present elements in hand, or they could have burn in hand, you know, or they could have any number of things. I guess we're not really sideboarded correctly against this deck, but... I don't really want to escalate with the Brutality, so I guess I just play Scooze here and hold up my stuff. Like, the just the Brutality to gain two seems a little loose, because obviously they're playing some big payoff cards, a lot, but they are playing Lava Spike as well. I'm confused. If anyone out there knows what's up, uh, please feel free to let me know with a deck like this, but... Okay, I mean, Swamp is pretty bad. Um, we'll pass. Brutality is pretty likely to whiff there, so I'm kind of waiting for a window to use it as a maybe a kill spell, plus a drain for two. Treetop Village, I guess. Okay, so this is uh, definitely Boros Burn Prison, is what we'll call it. Lava Spike to the face. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Tireless Tracker. Good draw. Good draw. Pretty happy to crack a clue right here, right now. Another swamp. Yeah, that's fine. Fine if our tracker lives. Skewer on the tracker. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Tarmogoyf is a good draw. And I'm starting to reach the point where I kind of want to use this Brutality before they find another, like, Ferocidon players can't gain lifestyle effect. So... The only problem with that, though, is it doesn't really change the clock. So I guess we're just continuing to hold our spells. I guess, but... I can certainly see arguments either way. Rift Bolt has been exiled. You got it. Another Fatal Push. Not very good. Patience. Patience one more time. Alrighty, so we're down to 10. They've got Swifty, sure. They've got another Blood Moon, sure. They're trying to race the Goyf, that's bold. We had push either way, but bold nevertheless. Still no need to play this Collective Brutality, doesn't change anything. Okay, so that was a lot more of the prison element of things than I expected. So we saw Chandra, we saw Blood Moon, we saw this Rampaging Ferocidon we knew about. I thought it was just like Burn with a top end, but it's more like a true hybrid of Burn and Prison, I guess. So... Let's revise our sideboarding with that in mind. I still don't think any of this stuff does too much. 
Um, still don't really want Damnation. You know, Dark Confidant is, is a little more interesting against a prison deck. It's very good. Uh, Thoughtseize, same. But I just don't know how much of this life loss we can afford. What in our main deck is bad against this stuff? I mean... Honestly, Liliana the Last Hope gets a lot better because she's a realistic win condition when the games get really silly and long, and they're also more inclined to point burn spells at our board with this deck. So I think we might actually want to just leave our deck as is without playing Thought Seizes or Bobs. But I could see accommodating a very small amount of those cards. I just don't think anything's really better, like... Yeah, I think we're just actually pretty well configured for this matchup, as we are. So, uh, it's a strange one. Let's hope we can get there in Game 3. Um, opponent Mulligans. This hand is completely great in every way, except it just dies to Blood Moon. I mean, it's not really completely great in every way, of course, with double Last Hope either. So maybe that's enough where we want them all. But push into Goyf into Lily is amazing. I don't want to lose to, just to Blood Moon, so I'm going to mulligan. Uh, this hand is awful, but I guess we're keeping. The opponent's going down nice and low. Down to five. Kalidus can go to the bottom. Weird in, like, a Burn-esque matchup, but we need we need other things. Turn one creature is annoying. Our hand is so slow. We draw Lily of the Veil. Okay. Still really slow. Hey, we can still cast our Fulminator under a potential Blood Moon, right? So there's that. Okay, they've got a Burn spell here. Man, I don't know what the opposing deck is. I don't know how it's a good idea to hybridize Burn in Prison like this. But... Jeez, the... Swifty into Boros Charm on the play is about as bad as it could get for us. Okay, no fetching here, because we're getting basics either way. I guess Overgrown Tomb is a potentially okay draw. Allowing us to play Liliana on curve. But we're still soft to the Blood Moon, so let's hope they don't have it. We're still also just getting burned out pretty well. Another burn spell and another big hit. Okay, now we'll fetch. Now we kind of want to draw something that's not a land for the most part. Another lily. Could be okay, but... We're on the verge of just, like, if they just have, like, a burn progression here, we are kind of in trouble. Looks like they might not. Okay, another land. Just whatever. Let's tick up. I don't know what to get rid of here. The obvious thing is another lily, but I think it's actually going to be a tracker. I think one... Ah... Tough call. Really tough call, actually. Let's get rid of the Lily. Just keep all of our bodies. Rest in peace is their pitch. Interesting that they didn't play it. But I guess whatever's in their hand is better. And they knew the Lily tick up was coming.
This might be like a searing blaze. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, we're in an interesting spot. I hope they just have, like, top-end cards stuck in hand, I guess. Skewer on the lily. Sure. Okay. So, couple options here, but I, I'm pretty sure given the prospect of Blood Moon and, and of various other things, we have to just make as many clues as we can in this particular window. And therefore, we'll crack one right now to grow our stuff before it attacks. Okay, I mean, we've got, we've got the stuff. We've got the tools. Lava Spike. All right. I guess we begin with Inquisition here. Cancel that. We begin by playing a forest. Inquisition. Chandra in hand. A little scary, but... So, let's crack a clue. We might actually just fulminate to Stone Rain here. They just scoop? Okay. Or were they just dead on board? Yeah, we, okay, yeah, we just cracked two clues, they're dead on board. Well, that's another way to do it, I guess, if you don't want to let me have my fun with Stone Rain with Fulminator. All right, well, I don't know what to make of that deck, guys. Like I said in the middle of that match, if you know what that deck is, let me know. I, I think it's pretty clearly like an attempt to hybridize Boros Burn and Boros Prison, but there's a lot of of incentives pulling you in opposite directions for doing so. That said, they gave us a really good game of it. Um, you know, if we had had a different configuration in our 75, we might have sideboarded incorrectly as it was. We kind of had, I think, the right cards for either matchup, but... For either matchup, meaning either uh, traditional burn or whatever we just saw. So... I mean, there's that. There's that element of, well, what am I playing against? What do I do? But, you know, you saw how clunky it was for them to have blood moons instead of burn spells in certain windows. Uh, you saw how clunky it was for the Chandra to be stuck in hand there. And we had some pretty poor progressions overall against them. We had some definitely subpar ones, and we did still get there. So I don't know what's what's up with that, but it's an interesting brew. I'm never... I'm not, I'm not trying to to put it down or to dissuade anybody from trying to to strike their own path. I'm just, uh, you know, if anyone has more information on it, I would be keen to know. But I'm feeling good, guys. We've uh, scraped out three close wins and we've cashed the league. So we're going into round five with the pressure kind of off. But cashing the league is not sufficient always for my... Uh, it's not sufficient to satiate the Grim Flayer. So let's try for the 4-in-1. Let's try for some more scalps. Uh, we won the die roll. That's a good start. Hand is fine to me. Uh, it lacks... a, like, guaranteed... almost guaranteed good game one payoff like Liliana of the Veil, but... It's a, it's a very fine curve out. It's a very fine keep. All right. Swamp Thought Seas. Island and Sheldock Isle, and Heatron Crab, Mind Funeral, Surgical Extraction. So we are against Mill. And that is a bit annoying. We don't care about Surgical whatsoever right now, and generally not at all. Um, we don't care much about... Like, this is awkward, because, like... Taking a crab makes the most sense a lot of times, but right now we can push it, or we can even try to pulse the crabs um, at some point. 
So therefore, maybe we take Mind Funeral, but they, of course, don't have black yet to cast Mind Funeral. But I think think we still take a, a mill spell. Still think we take a Mind Funeral. The game's going to go long enough where that's going to be live at some point. And if it's not, well, they just never draw black land. We probably just win anyway, no matter what we took. Again, we do have answers to the crabs. So if we draw an untapped land here, when we do, they're going to extract Thought Seizes on the draw step. That's great for us. Go for it. So right now we can play Ooze, and the next turn we can pulse both crabs. Um, I actually am not sure we're supposed to, though. My reasoning for that is... Number one, they now know about the pulse, so they might not play right into it. Number two, if we just kill a crab now, we save the uh, we save the mill. Then again, maybe we're supposed to just be proactive here and play a creature. So you know they do have some graveyard effects, probably. So I guess we still just play the scoos. You know, if they only play one crab, well, then next turn we get to push it, eat it, and play treetop. So, it's fine, too. But, as far as we know, they only have one trigger here, because they, unless they top deck a fetch land, then maybe they get two. Okay, the other crab, let's hope for no fetch land. Yeah, it's just shell dock isle. So, yeah, we're just going to pulse the crabs, and that's pretty cool. Opponent's hand is Mind Funeral, plus two unknowns. For those who don't know, Sheldock Isle is a hideaway land that can... Um, it hides a card. You look at it, and then you can play it without its mana cost if it has 20 or fewer... if a library has 20 or fewer cards in it. Um, Tarmogoyf is a good draw. It gets really big in this matchup, but I think we still have to pulse the crabs away here. Would be very loose to let them just keep getting value off of the crabs. And by value, I mean, like, their win condition is to mill us, so. A lot of people have asked me what, what to do against the mill matchup, what to think about it. I don't know, I haven't played it enough. Um, we have a lot of stuff that lines up really well, like hand disruption. Um, it kind of depends on the mill player's build, I think. In in so far as what exactly they're up to, builds do vary. So tar two Tarmogoyf, four lands, Kalidas, two Lilies, and Inquisition. You know they got rid of some good cards, but they milled a total of five ten. So it's a three mana mill ten. I guess it's about average. I don't exactly know. Lily of the Veil. Vale. Potentially a good draw, but I think we are supposed to play the Goyf. So, if I eat a creature here, that puts them to 13. It's still not quite lethal, but I still think I'm supposed to. I actually think I'm going to eat something out of my own yard, because they do have effects where that matters. Like if there's 20 or more cards in a library, then do whatever. I think that applies uh, specifically to Visions of Beyond. Or 20 or more cards in a graveyard, then Visions of Beyond turns from a 1 mana draw 1 to a 1 mana draw 3. So I think it's better to eat my own confidant there, but... All right, another crab, another shell dock isle. So next turn we can push and then take Liliana up. 
is probably the, the best play. And we're, we are in good shape here, no doubt about it. We don't quite have lethal for turn 5, but we are close. Alright, so now with future Scooz activations, I guess we can just eat their crabs where we have, uh... No, we're still at 19. We're still quite, you know, just a little below 20. So maybe... Yeah, if their last card is Visions of Beyond, it was it was a next level play for me to eat my Bob, because we've got 19 cards in our yard. But we're about to see what it is. Maybe just a... could be Mind Funeral. Who knows? Set Adrift. Uh, bouncing our Tarmogoyf. Well, you know, that's honestly pretty good. It does extend the game, and it does make us sequence differently this turn. Uh, fortunately, we have the ability to kind of do everything anyway, but it's definitely not as good. So we replay Goyf. We push a crab. We eat a crab. We swing for four. And we do have lethal now with uh, just our creatures to say nothing of treetop, so. Opponent top deck's Field of Ruin. Well, that does not do it, and they they don't have Hideaway active. So that's game. All right. Begin sideboarding. Okay, let's, uh, let's try to take down Mill here and... End 4-1, and one. so... We will be considering Nile Spellbomb, because again, the graveyards do matter to some degree. I don't know how highly to rate it. We didn't see that much of their build, to be fair. Um, I guess we're considering EE to kill crabs. Uh, they probably play Mesmeric Orb. That's about all it hits, so it's not that high value. Uh, we don't know that Cage is good here. Um, Ashiok to shut off fetches is a little bit interesting, and exiling the graveyard can mess with some of their mechanics, but I think I'm going to pass on Ashiok again until I see more of their stuff. Also seems better on the play, as far as just hosing the fetches is concerned. Um, Fulminator Mage is a big maybe. You know, you can see how, how it's a little tough to side in this matchup. Again, without knowing exactly what they're up to, I think Collective Brutality is a definite... Hmm, 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 hmm. Honestly, we might not make very many changes at all here. Let's just, I guess, look at what's bad. These are cards we can consider for this game. Like I said, I'm going to pass on Ashiok until I see more. I don't think we want any of this other stuff. Um, and maybe, I mean, most of our cards are good, like Collective Brutality is great, kills Crab, and takes a mill spell out of their hand, or both. Plus the Life Drain is not irrelevant. Um, this card is good. We, we can maybe trim a Fatal Push or two, but we kind of want to kill Crabs as soon as possible. They're going to play Mesmeric Orb, maybe that Mill Enchantment, maybe Ensnaring Bridge. We need all of these, uh, Flex Spot Removal. Scoos is fine. Bob is great. Goyf is great. Uh, Tracker is a little slow. Last Hope. Buying back a threat, that's, we're going to have a lot to do with that. It just might be a little slow as well. But maybe we just cut a Fatal Push here. Like, I think we kind of want to just end the game with Tracker rather than mess around with Fulminator Mage. Um, I'm going to put an EE in here as a little bit of a safety valve for, like, a multiple crab start. As well as just, like, Mesmeric Orbs, although that's obviously a bit of a problem with hopefully us having a Premier 2 to drop threat to do on Curve as well. But, so just very conservative changes for the moment. Uh, and there's our EE, so who knows how good it's going to be. Um, but our hand's great, honestly. We will keep. Nice. 
This is one of many matchups where a duress would be good out of the side. I've I've been wondering about coming back to the duress for some time now. All right, Inquisition, you. And we do see that Mesmeric Orb. We see Trapmaker Snare, uh, so they can go tutor up Archive Trap. They've got Fatal Push as well. So, this is a tough hand to beat because we've got... We've got Push to answer our creatures. They've got Trapmaker Snare. We're probably going to have to fetch at some point. But... I think our play here is going to be to leave the orb and kill it with EE. So we're going to go turn 2 EE. If we go turn 2 EE, then what do we want to do from there? Um, I guess we're just going to take this trap maker snare. Plan to beat a Fatal Push just by having more threats than they have answers. Very difficult decision, in my opinion. So the orb's going to mill us for one, and then it's going to mill us for two next turn, but we're going to be able to answer it. We've got another trophy. I'm still going to go for the EE here, but we'll see. They have a very good hand, to be fair. The, the hand is quite nice. Um, it's a little slow in terms of, like, getting the mill engine rolling. Like, they didn't have a crab, they don't have any direct mill spells, but it's very re reactive. It's very effective against our hand in a reactive sort of way. Field of Ruin. Alright, hoping to kind of draw, I guess, like a... A fetch land, maybe. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna crack my EE now for sure. Because now we're gonna get to play a two drop this turn, and it's gonna trade with Fatal Push, but it's still pretty good for us. And now they get to Archive Trap us. Mill 13. Mill another two. Okay, we draw Tracker, sure. So, what do we want to trade with their Fatal Push? Is it Goyf or is it Bob? Um... I think it's just the Bob because the Goyf is going to end the game in so few hits. And it's nice that they got Island there because now they have, have to use... Well, I was going to say they have to use their only black mana to push the Bob before it untaps. But they found another one, so who knows. But maybe they're, uh, maybe they're just kind of out of gas. So we're going to play our Goyf and we're going to pass. Uh, no land there is a little rough. A bunch of reactive cards in hand is a little rough, but to be fair, we can answer a lot of their top decks, and we're just kind of racing. We hope they don't have another Fatal Push here. Murderous Cut. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good one. I believe that island is still in their hand. But I could be wrong about that. Okay, it was.
Oh, another Archive Trap hardcast. That's really good. That's one of the things that's really tough. Uh, that was one of their best final cards to have. So, Tracker with no land to follow up is horrible, but... You know, the opponent is in pure top deck mode. So, we have a chance. Visions of Beyond draw three. Wow, their top decks. Their top decks have been real this game. Yeah, I mean... Their flood was very bad unless they had a hard cast archive trap that they were trying to do, and then literal top deck mode, they find a visions of beyond into another visions. Okay, we are almost certainly not beating this if they have any more direct mill. If they kind of have to rely on permanence, maybe we can somehow get there, but yeah, they've got more direct mill. So, mine funeral milling 10. Okay. Tracker is not even good now to draw cards. Uh, Thought Seize is fine, but we're pretty dead. I hear I'm pretty sure. So Mission Briefing, Glimpse the Unthinkable. Okay, so Glimpse is a mill 10 that outright kills us. Mission Briefing is basically going to just kill us. So I guess we take the Glimpse make them do the mission briefing thing, maybe get a little more information, right? Yeah, we'll see if they reveal anything else with uh, Surveil too, but... We are dead. We are absolutely dead. Our hand was so clunky this game. Yeah, they don't reveal anything else. Okay, good game. We've been milled. I guess we should have scooped to that to conceal info. We'll do it now. Better late than never. Um, yeah, well, this is why people ask me about the mill matchup, because it can seem pretty tough in situations like that. And, uh, yeah, like I, like I said, they had a really good hand. Um, might not have looked that overtly powerful, but that was a good one. Um, and I don't... I think our sideboarding is fine. I don't think Fulminator Mage is that good. They're only a two-color deck. We're not likely to mana screw them, you know? Uh, and, yeah, it hits Hideaway lands. Yeah, it can keep them off of Hardcast Archive Trap. But is it really better to play a 2-2 Grey Ogre with Upside than to... I mean, maybe... You know what? It's better than Kalidus. At least one is better than a Kalidus. Um, I didn't see any creatures at all that game, so I'm pretty happy to be hedged away from Fatal Push. Maybe we cut another Fatal Push. On the play, we're going to get more proactive. Alright, we'll bring in a couple Fulminators here. Um... There's also the prospect of Nile Spellbomb, but... Yeah, I mean, Mission Briefing plus Visions of Beyond is probably enough to play a Spellbomb. I like this setup. I think we should keep a couple pushes in in case of crabs and, and so forth. But... Yeah, let's run it like this. All right, come on, strong hand. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it strong, but it is a keep. Hoping for an opponent to mull here, they don't. All right, so I think our best chance of not getting Archive Trapped is just to fetch main phase right here, right now, deny them a draw step. And pass. Oh, they had it. Oh, no. No, they have a second one? Are you serious? Mill 26 on turn zero for the opponent. Yep, I mean, we, we can't mull a hand because it has a fetch land, so... 
I guess you got us. All right, so... We'll have to see what we draw, of course, but our one of our better lines might be Bob into Fulminator and aggressively activate it. But... You know, the opponent kept 7, and they milled us for 26 on turn 0, so... Yeah, it's pretty tough. Um, okay, I think we're supposed to fetch now, unless their draw step was Archive Trap. I think we're supposed to fetch now, because they're less likely to have it now than they will be next turn. So, I'm going to go for it. If they have another Archive Trap, then we're just meant to lose. <laughs> we're just meant to lose, right? Um... Get Forest, because we have a Scooze around, I guess, but probably doesn't matter. Can't believe they had two Archive Traps. That is savage. They've got a Crab. They've got a Land. At least it's not a Fetch Land. Bob drawing a card per turn could come back to bite us, but it has not. Um, I think the play here is Liliana. We just can't give them any more mill. It would be nice to Fulminator and keep them off of a three-drop play next turn, but I think it's just got to be the Lillian Edict U. But we're in trouble. Um... There's no two ways about it. We don't have a very fast clock with just a Dark Confidant here. How nice would this game potentially have been going if we just had this exact hand, but with non-fetch lands. Um, like, who knows what else they've got, of course, but if we on the play go Bob into Lily, generally speaking, in this matchup, seems really good as long as we didn't don't eat two archive traps on, on the first uh, possible, at the first possible stage, right? Inquisition, yeah, I mean... I rather that than than mill, I guess. But they'll see that our hand is depressingly reactive and you know, potentially not that scary, but if they're if they're inquisitioning then maybe they don't have any any more mill, and that's really what we want. Just no more mill for you. They take away scoos. They play Oh, they activate their Sheldock Isle for a glimpse of the unthinkable. Oh my goodness. We're going to lose, aren't we? We're losing this game. Uh, tick up the Lily. Pitching Swamp. Pretty free pitch. Field of Ruin. Okay, so... If we play the Fulminator, like, the Grey Ogre clock doesn't really change the clock. So I think we have to hope they have, like, Mind Funerals and Archive Traps stuck in hand. And we we top deck a Tarmogoyf next turn. So I, th I believe we are supposed to play Fulminator and destroy a land. And I think we're also supposed to play EE e e out on one here, 
because we can, in theory, possibly beat a crab with no land, but we cannot beat other EE targets like Mesmeric Orb. We just lose to those cards. So um, we're taking all of the possible outs we can get. We, we could just die right here, right now. We're probably not going to win even if we don't, but got to play to our outs. Okay, we top decked a Tarmogoyf, so that is step one. Let's tick up. Guess we're pitching trophy because we're just going to go as wide as possible here. On this turn. So if all of our stuff lives, if all of our attacks connect, we're going to hit them down to 13 this turn. Next turn it will be 10... Can we eat three creatures? Yeah, I, I guess we've got lethal next turn, it looks like, anyway. We need them to not have mill. And, of course, we need them to not have a kill spell, either. They discarded a kill spell. Alright, I guess that means they probably have another one, which is bad news for us. But... It's where we are. It's just playing out our stuff. All right. You know, if miraculously they don't have kill spell, they don't have mill, now nah, they have fatal push. Of course they do, but you know, if they don't have mill, I think we can still get there. Okay. Treetop village may help in that endeavor. We'll tick up. We'll pitch a blooming marsh. Crypt Incursion, well, it was an uncastable one, so... I think we're just sinking all of our mana into the ooze. If we want to hold up Trophy, we would only be sinking two mana into it, which means it is... We're hitting for six this turn instead of seven. I don't know what good hold up, holding up Trophy does, so... Let's just attack. And we'll begin eating things. All right, hitting for six this turn puts them to seven. Like, I think we just lose to a kill spell and we win if they don't have a kill spell. And they don't have mill. So I guess we actually do hold up trophy in EE here. Okay, treetop village. Pass to the opponent. Crossing our fingers. Come on. Come on. We need this. We need this. Just have bricks in hand. Bricks! Bricks? <laughs> oh no, they're paying cost. Visions of Beyond. Yikes, department. Okay, so 46 cards in our graveyard. A Skuza activation is not going to change that threshold. Oh no. Oh no, oh no. They bounce a Boro. Okay. You got it. They replay a Boro. Sure. They play a Crab. Yes. We crack EE e to kill the crab. 
We swing for lethal. Oh my goodness. We somehow did it. All right, let's make sure we actually do it. Activate treetop village. Eat a crab for good measure. Oh my goodness, that was the most intense game five, match five, game three of match five, I should say, to be exact, I have had in some time. I really couldn't, I really thought we were just stone dead to the double archive trap on turn zero, but we did it. Oh, that feels so good. I really didn't want to have the four and one ruined by Mill, <laughs> and it wasn't, but it was as close as possible. What, we have one card left in the library by the end? And look at that. Greatness at any cost. Dark Confidant drawing us exactly enough cards to win. While exactly few enough to not mill. <laughs> I just have no words for that. So, awesome. That was such a good league. That was such a fun league. Um, started out very inauspiciously getting absolutely destroyed. With no real hope of com competing by the new look of Tron. I would love to know your experiences, my my friendly viewers, against that deck. Have you seen, is that just like a rogue thing? Or are lots of Tron players starting to adopt that style of build? Because if they are, you know, it's only two games. It's only one match at two games, but I think that bodes pretty, uh, pretty ill for us, if I do say so myself. Um... So let me know what you've seen about that, what you've heard about that, what your experience against that have been. Um, you know, I... I maybe I, I'm certainly no Tron player. Seems to me like it's just kind of worse against a lot of the format to have a deck so dedicated to assembling the uh, 7 mana on turn 3 and then have a high density of payoffs that are four drops and also a sideboard kind of built around those four drops, but maybe the prospect of the Mycosynth Lattice Lockout plus the, you know, fact that it is good against decks that are disrupting their Tron assemblage. I don't know. Maybe it is good. Um, but I, I do I do think it seems bad for us, but that is only my first impression, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. Love to hear your thoughts about the mill matchup in general. Um, I, I think we hand, we piloted pretty well here. I think we sideboarded relatively correctly. You know, more conservative game going into game two without having seen their deck because the builds do vary enough. But ultimately, yeah, what a league. So we got pasted round one, and then we came back strong. Four straight wins, my friends. So hope you enjoyed this league. I enjoyed playing it for sure. Um, this was my fourth... Fourth league of the month, and I think it's, uh, or it's, you know, with the May list. I think we've got two three and twos and two four and ones so far, so the results have been good with the new list. Um, I made the emergency recall of Graft Digger's Cage, and we did not end up using it, but hey, we are stocked for the graveyard decks. We are stocked against a lot of stuff, and I really like where the rock is right now. I really like where our deck is, so as always, my friends, let me know your thoughts about. The lines I took, the sideboarding, so on and so forth, and, and more generally what you're thinking about the state of the game. Um, but this is a fine place to be until Modern Horizons comes out, which we're all waiting for. This is a fine list to be running, a uh, very powerful, very fun way to play Modern. So thank you once again to all Patreon supporters, especially Paul, who is of the Veil, and Zhao, who is an Inquisitor. Um, welcome aboard, my friends. Thank you once again. And remember, my friends out there watching, if you would like to support this content, Patreon is the number one best way to do it. I am a working father. I uh, don't have a ton of disposable income. Your support helps me carve out time in my day to make these videos for you. And also to, you know, have the, the liquidity of, of ticks to, uh, you know, get the new cards as they come up. Um, make sure that I'm not taking away from my responsibilities to do so. Um, the other ways you can help this content grow if you are enjoying it, which I hope you are, is to subscribe to the YouTube channel, to like and share and comment, and, uh, you know, word of mouth as well. Spread the word to your friends. If you've got a friend who's a rock player, you know, you might want to send him my way. Um, 
I look forward to hearing your thoughts, and I thank you once again to everybody supporting this content in any way that you can. Look forward to uh, hearing from you, and I hope you have a great day. I will talk to you soon.